we come then to Origen, and Origen is a barrel of fun for a theologian because he, he introduced some really clear thinking into Christianity. He introduced philosophical thinking, and that was a great advance, but ultimately he failed. The key insight of Origen was that the Son participates in the divinity of the Father, and he does this by perpetually contemplating the Father. That is, that the Son proceeds from the Father like an act of will from the mind. That's the key insight of Origen, and I'd like you to come back to that after we've clarified what that means. So, Origen was born in Alexandria around about 182. He, he died around about 251. He was most concerned to preserve the distinction of the Son and the Father as different persons. But at the same time, he opposed the adoptionists by insisting that the Son was God, not by adoption, but by his very nature. So, Origen's great strength was that he was trying to uphold what was taught in Revelation. The genius of Origen was realizing that if we're talking about God, no material images, no organic concepts were adequate to describe God. Origen really introduced to Christian theology the reality that material images cannot work for good theology because God is strictly immaterial. And so the insight of Origen was, was that the Son is related to the Father. Jesus is related to the Father, not in the way of human generation or animal generation, but in a way, a manner, that is totally without material or organic being. So if, if material generation didn't work for Jesus and the Father, what did? Origen used the analogy of human thought and willing. Now, thinking according to Origen and, and the biology and psychology of the time were immaterial things. So human thought and willing were not regarded as material. Using the psychophysiology, if I could call it that, of the time, Origen held that when we think or exercise our will, no matter is generated. And using that insight, he took the starting point of his analogy, the scriptural text that says that everything the Father does, the Son does likewise. So Origen said then that the Son is to the Father as an act of willing is to the mind. The, the, the willing that we have is part of the mind, but the thought of that is part of the mind as well. So they're united in their being, but they are distinct things. A weakness of Origen's theory was the fact that the mind can stop thinking, and an act of will depends on the mind for its very existence. So this meant for Origen's analogy that the sun could stop being God, and also that the sun was not fully God in his own right. Origen's response was, was brilliant, ultimately wrong, but brilliant. He said that the Son continues to be divine because he perpetually contemplates the profundity of the Father. Now this may sound very strange to our way of thinking today. To understand it, we need to realize that Origen used a philosophy that was taken from Plato. Plato's philosophy taught that if, if we contemplate something, and especially if we contemplate something divine, the more we contemplate it, the more we become like that thing. So Origen argued this, if Jesus the Son constantly, perpetually contemplates the Father, he is more and more like the Father until he reaches the point that he is actually divine like the Father. So, using the philosophy that the more that you contemplate something, the more you become like that, 
and that if you were to contemplate God enough, as Jesus did, you would be divine. That makes sense. There is a difficulty, though. Origen's theory ultimately takes away the Son's own divine nature. That is, that Jesus the Son is not divine in his own right. He only participates in the divine nature by contemplating it. And so, for the Christians who believe that Christ was God, Origen ultimately failed. Because if Jesus only participates in God's divinity by contemplating it, he's not absolutely truly God. He's still effectively adopted by God through his contemplation. And so, I think that Origen made a good effort. The, the brilliant insight that he brought to Christian theology is that we cannot think of God in material terms. And, and this is the, the negative way of doing theology, to say that we, we cannot think of God materially. Where Origen failed, though, was trying to use philosophical images and concepts that said that Jesus is, is divine through contemplation. Unfortunately, divinity is not something that you acquire. It's something that you either have or have not. And this is where Origen failed, because the divinity of Jesus was contingent or dependent upon his contemplation. And if that's the sort of divinity you have, then it's not real divinity, and you are not in yourself truly God. In our next videos, we're going to explore some of the heretics and the councils that were called to deal with those heretics. So I look forward to seeing you again and joining you online.